What's going on guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Comedia back with another Dokkan Battle video. Welcome to my extremely overdue showcase of this Dokkan Awakened Physical Champa. Now, I want to apologize to everybody that was really looking forward to this showcase when the uh, Dokkan Awakening was first announced. I think what happened was that initially when I saw the Awakening, I was very excited for it. I was like, yo, this guy got so much better. He used to be one of the worst SSRs in the unfeatured pool, and now he's actually very, very usable. But <laughs> what eventually happened was that I summoned for the tech hit, and uh, after 700 stones worth of rage summons, I didn't pull him. I didn't even pull Jiren, who I still don't have. So at this point, I was like, you know what? My hype overall for the entire update, for the entire release, kind of died down. So I think that's why I haven't done the showcase up to this point. And aside from that, I mean, I've been busy with some other stuff, right? There was the Gogeta and Broly stuff on JP. I am a JP player now, if you guys didn't know. Um, not as much as Global, but I still do play the JP side now. And also the New Year Step Up Banner content that I was making, so I didn't really have time to make this showcase anyways. But now that things are a little bit more chill, um, the games have on both sides have kind of died down a little bit. We're waiting for the next big release. I now have some time to show this guy some love and uh, see just how good he is now with his Dokkan Awakening. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's see what this physical Champa is all about. So here are his stats at rainbow status. And as you can see, they're not very impressive. His attack is quite low for a rainbow unit. Um, I'm looking forward to some kind of Extreme Z Awakening for him maybe in the future where we can see that attack stat go up to like 14, 15k. For the time being though, it is very low, but it's not too big of a deal because he is primarily for most people going to be a support unit. Okay. So his uh, leader skill got a huge upgrade. It used to be just physical, physical types. I don't remember what it was, but it wasn't very good. And now he's actually the leader of the uh, Universe 6 category. He provides all Universe 6 units with key plus 3. HP, attack, and defense plus 120%. And physical types, key plus 3. HP, attack, and defense plus 70%, which is not bad at all. And his super attack um, causes supreme damage and great lowers defense, which I think is the same as before. And his passive now, and this is the part that really got a huge upgrade from his uh, previous iteration. He gives all universe 6 category allies key plus 2, and attack and defense plus 40%, and he has a medium chance to increase his attack by 200%. So previously he only had that 200% uh, or medium chance to get that attack buff, which was good when it activated, but other than that he was pretty much useless, right? So now he's actually the best possible support unit for universe 6 team, as well as having that chance to become a really hard hitter. Medium chance, I believe, is about 30%, so it's not really something you should bank on. Now, <laughs> having that said, I did go with mostly crits and additionals. Actually, all crits and additionals, and I went with primarily crits and then the rest of additionals on my Chompa because I wanted to make him a damage dealer. I wanted to make him as beastly as possible. I know a lot of people are going to be like, yo, Tiger, what are you doing? But I don't really care, man. This is my Chompa. I'm not saying this is the best possible build for him, but this is what I want to go with, so... Uh, leave me alone, all right? So we went with 15 critical, 11 additional. I think a lot of people are going to build him with primarily additionals and uh, dodge. So most people are probably going to give him as much dodge as possible and the rest of additionals because he is really built more as a uh, support unit, right? But the fact that he does have that medium chance for 200% attack means that once in a while he will be doing a lot of damage. So hopefully we can get that passive off as often as possible in this video. His links are Godly Power, Connoisseur, The Innocence, More Than Meets the Eye, Over 9000, Shocking Speed, and Fierce Battle. And he has two category, Realm of Gods um, and Universe 6. And uh, of course, he is best on Universe 6 because of that support passive. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. We're gonna take a Realm of Gods team, kind of random here, but um, his best thinking partner on this team is definitely Beerus, so we wanna bring him. And otherwise, I mean, the other ones are just here for support. Uh, this guy is actually a pretty good linking partner for the Champa as well. So let's jump into it. We're going to do some boss rush too. I feel like it's a boss rush kind of day. So let's just do it, guys. Now, I don't want to hear anybody talking about, yo, Tiger, why aren't you taking him on a, um, on a Universe 6 team? Because obviously the best leader for that team is Tech Hit, and I never pulled Tech Hit, I tried my best, it just didn't happen, and I don't wanna hear anything about it, I'm still traumatized from it, I'm still traumatized from my summons, I could have had like 700 plus stones right now on my account, but instead all of them went to the Tech, tech Hit banner, and I got nothing in return, I got like one dupe of UI Goku, which was like my third dupe, which didn't even help that much, anyways, I'm over it, 
it's okay. Let's focus on this cat. Um, I believe his passive didn't activate because if it did activate, then we would have seen his attack stat go up a lot higher. So right now what we're going to see is uh, him without the 200% attack boost, but linked with his best thinking partner on this team, Tech Beerus, and also getting a 20% or 25% attack buff from the Kami as well. So that's not, that's not too bad, actually. 863k. Can we get a crit here? Crit additional, you know, I did invest a lot into those, so hopefully we can get, there we go, additional, and we one shot at the Goku on the first stage. Not too bad, if you add up the two uh, damage numbers, it's about a million damage he did there, so for a primarily support unit, I'll take that, man, I'll take that any day of the week. Of course, if you were running double hit, <laughs> he would definitely do even more damage than that because um, the double hit would give him 170% each as opposed to 150% from UI Goku. I don't even know what I just did there. I clicked on the wrong orb, my bad. Uh, I'm not really focusing right now, guys, I apologize. So uh, this is kind of a wasted rotation, but it doesn't matter because for this video, we are primarily trying to see what the what the Champa can do, right? And we actually got really lucky this time because I did manage to get Champa on the first rotation and also linked with Beerus on the first rotation as well. That usually never happens. If you guys have seen my other showcases, um, it usually takes me like three or four turns to get the rotation set up properly, but we got it immediately, which is perfect. Okay, let's see here. Um, yeah, we, okay, we didn't the, get the passive off this time either. Like I said, the passive doesn't activate as often as you would like it to. It's a medium chance. So that basically equates to 30%, and 30% really isn't that good. Um, you, you can kind of treat this video almost as a Tech Beerus pre-Extreme Z Awakened showcase as well, because my Beerus is rainbowed here, and it's rainbowed him because I had a lot of extra tech orbs. I had all the dupes, I was like, why not? Uh, might as well just get ready for that EZA, right? Once that Beerus EZAs, by the way, 863k from Champa, not too bad. Once that Beerus EZAs, he is an absolute monster, man. He hits so freaking hard. And right now, he's actually not too bad. I think he was a little bit underrated. Uh, that's just my opinion before the Extreme Z Awakening. But once he got his EZA, like, nobody was saying he was bad. Nobody was saying he was underwhelming because he ended up being one of the best EZAs we currently have. He doesn't hit as hard as uh actually no does he hit harder than in janemba no, no i don't think so i don't know guys don't take my word for it but if he doesn't hit as hard as in janemba he hits almost as hard as in janemba and uh he can do a little bit of tanking as well just overall really really good unit right now so i don't regret rainbowing him at all because it's gonna be worth it once this eza comes now i believe the next eza coming to global if you guys are global players watching this right now is going to be um uh, I think it was Physical Kid Boo, which I'm excited for as well because I have Physical Kid Boo rainbowed. But as far as uh, Tech Beerus, I think it's going to be the one after Physical Kid Boo. So, Global players will probably have to wait for another, I don't know, four or five months. But, I mean, we're used to waiting, right? If you're a Global player, you're used to waiting for content from JP, so it's all good. In my books, it's all good. <laughs> okay, so I believe Champa did get his passive out this time because as you can see, his attack stat went up to 243k before we give him any orbs. So let's see what he can do here. Unfortunately, no support unit on uh, rotation, but it's okay, it's okay. It should be some, it should be well over a million, I'm gonna guess, just just based off. Oh my God, okay, that's a, that's a lot over a million. Okay, 1.7 mil, guys, with the passive active. What's he gonna hit for? Oh my God, 3.3 mil from freaking Champa. Yo, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he was able to output like, some impressive numbers before the awakening but with the awakening with the improved stats and the fact that he's rainbowed and the fact i gave him like all crits and everything <laughs> i mean his th that's that's pretty impressive then keep in mind keep in mind this guy's primary role is to be a support for that universe 16. so i mean my god the fact that he put out that much damage as a support unit blows my mind and i i, I mean I, like I said, most people are probably going to build him geared more towards support, geared toward, more towards dodging, um, doing additionals and things like that. But for me, man, like I'm going crits. I, I mean, I already went crits on my, on my Champa and I have no regrets right now. So if you guys feel like making your, your Champa a little bit more beastly, a little bit more geared towards damage output, I don't think it's actually a terrible idea. Now, the thing is, of course, we had to... We had to wait for him to come back like three or four times before he got that passive off. But if he does get that passive off, this guy's a monster, man. That damage is insane. Okay, can we get that off again here, please? Yo, we got it again. Yo, okay, we got lucky. We got lucky. We got it again. Okay. Um, these numbers should be good because we do have the type advantage as well over... Uh, is it Sorbet? I think it's Sorbet, right? I don't know. I don't remember all these side characters' names. 
uh, from these from from Dragon Ball. So I'm sorry if I got it wrong. 1.9 mil. Can we crit again? Yo, get another crit. Champa, do it for the showcase. No, yo, no crit, but 3.3 mil still, because of course you got type advantage. So it's basically like a crit on a neutral typing basis, I guess. I don't know what I'm talking about, but either way, <laughs> that was good. That was good. Yo, back to back over 3 million damage from our boy Champa. Physical Champa's Awakening is so good. Um, and even, yo, even without the passive active, even without that 200% like attack. The damage was still quite good there. I mean, of course, if he's rainbowed, so if your yours is not rainbowed, they're gonna see lower numbers overall. But damn, dude, like that's that's wild. That, that is some wild damage. And I was testing him um, off camera a little bit, and I never got numbers like that either. I guess because it's probably because I was doing some of the newer events where the you know the bosses do have higher uh, higher defense and more damage reduction, which is gonna be the case for a lot of the newer Dokkan events going forward. So if you are running him on like, you know, the tech hit event or the even like LR Gogeta, LR Vegito, yeah, the damage numbers not, might not be as impressive as you see them here, but he's still doing some, he's still gonna be doing some good damage, especially if you give him crits, give him additionals, got additional there too. So overall about a million damage right there. Tech Beerus, I think that's the first attack he actually launched in the showcase, and this man did 2.3 million neutral. I mean, not neutral, actually, he has type advantage, my bad. But still, um, Tech Beerus is going to be a beast, too. I can't wait for Tech Beerus' EZA. I'm getting very excited. I'm getting very excited about these two cats right now. Now, <laughs> uh, I was talking to my friends about this, and uh, I just want to share with you guys. So basically, like, Beerus is really testing my patience these days. And the reason I say that is because... Number one, I pulled LR Beerus recently on the step ups, the New Year step ups, and I'm not complaining about that at all, of course, because I never had LR Beerus. I really wanted him. Let me focus real quick on this. Boom, done. Okay. So I was really excited to pull the LR Beerus, and then I realized, oh crap, I don't have a lot of the medals I need to awaken him to LR status. So he's just chilling there right now as a TUR, SA10, orbs invested. Um, and I'm probably gonna have to wait for months because that putting like Rage Vegeta event recently came back last month which means that's probably not gonna come back again for another i don't know at least four five maybe six months so this beerus is gonna stay unawakened for for a very long time which is frustrating i don't know why bandai has to do this to us why they can't just make the medals or make the events for like specific lrs that need those medals Permanent. Like, I think it would make a lot of sense if they kept that pudding event permanent, if they kept the uh, Bojack event permanent as well. By the way, I did pull Bojack too. I did pull Bojack as well, LR Bojack, on the uh, first step of the second round of the step ups. And I'm like, yo, I can't wake in this guy either because I need the medals from his story events. Now, I was told that apparently you can farm them over the weekend on the hero extermination event, so I'm definitely going to be doing that. But Beerus, I have to wait, like I said, like many, many months to awaken him. And also, I have this Tech Beerus uh, rainbow now too. So he's making me wait too because he's just chilling there in his non Extreme Z Awakened stat state. And uh, it's good, it's good, but not nearly as good as he could be. So Beerus these days is just testing my patience, man. Just testing my patience. But uh, if, I, if I just think about it for a minute, I'm like, you know what? It's not such a bad thing because the whole point of this game is not to just like get everything at once, right? It's, it's about like. You know, it's, it's, about, it's about the process, it's about the journey, and like sometimes you have to wait a little bit longer. If you just got everything done in like one day, it wouldn't be as fun, right? At least in my opinion. So, you know what? I'm just gonna be patient. I'm gonna wait for the Tech Beerus EZA to come. I'm gonna wait for the LR Beerus event to come back, or the Rage Vegeta Pudding event to come back. And uh, once I awaken those guys, yo, my Realm of Gods team, my uh, whatever other team I can run these guys on, I don't even know right now off the top of my head. Um, they're all gonna be so much better, especially that LR Beerus, man. I can't wait for that LR Beerus because just adding a new summable LR to your collection is just exciting. By the way, let me know what you guys pulled on the step ups. I know a lot of people pulled mad, mad fire. Um, 573k, not too bad, not too bad. Yo, Beerus is doing pretty well though. Like the tech Beerus is, is outputting some impressive numbers. I expected this, but this is pre EZA, guys. We don't have the EZA on global yet. So just imagine how much damage he's gonna be doing at that time once the EZA comes. Um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you already, already know because you probably watch showcases by like The Truth or of some of those other JP Dokkan YouTubers. But for me personally, I don't watch a lot of uh, 
content on the JP side because I'm so focused on like doing my own content on global and things like that. But in the future, I will be doing more JP content. So I guess I'll be watching more of those videos as well, just to get myself more attuned with like the JP side as well. But uh, I'm getting off topic. I don't really know like why I'm even talking about this right now. I guess I just kind of talk about random things that are on my mind when I do these showcases because I mean, there's only so much you can say about the gameplay, right? There's only, you're like, whoa, that number was really high. And I already freaked out about the fact that freaking Champa did 3 million damage. But yeah, here's the thing. Like, he's not he's not doing that consistently, right? He's not really doing insane numbers consistently because his passive only has a 30% chance. 30% chance to activate. Now, I think that is the actual number, but I could be off too. Um, so his passive again didn't activate here. But you know what we're, we're gonna try to do is uh, maybe I should pop a Jaburo cookie just to do a little bit of nuking. You know what, maybe I should wait until his passive, you know what, okay, you know what, we'll do one Jaburo cookie for when his passive is not activated, and then another cookie for when his passive does activate, and uh, see what kind of different numbers we can see. See, here I feel like it's gonna be well over a million, but nothing too impressive, but with the 200% passive activated, it should be like, he should be able to do like, three four five million we'll see we'll see what happens so here we go hit that sell junior for 1.3 1.2 1.3 mil not too bad not too bad and uh the spears is gonna hit for 2.2 yo this guy crits so much this guy crits so much i know i talked about this in the past but i do feel like certain units like they just benefit more from certain um, hidden potential skill boosts and that's definitely so, like like a superstition kind of thing because in theory I mean everybody should get the same percentage boost from like the crits or the additionals but I just feel like some units you give them like 20 critical they do a lot more crits than other units that have the same level of critical I'm, I might just be crazy but if you guys have uh, El Arbogito Blue like Rainbowed you might know what I'm talking about. Like a lot of people I've talked to, they're like, "Yo, um, super or uh, Vegito Blue Rainbowed like crits all the damn time." And I'm like, "I know this guy's always critting." And I don't, I, I don't know if it's you know he if they actually just put some you know mystery mechanic in the game where like certain units actually get a higher boost than others. But in theory, it shouldn't be that way. But I don't know. I, I just, just kind of feel like maybe it's like a superstition thing. I don't. I'm just talking like crap right now. <laughs> don't like take my word for it and tell other people. Yo, Tiger saying that certain units can actually crit more with the same level of crits. Um, but it's just how it feels. You know, it's just how it feels. But uh, yeah, I'm crazy. Anyways, <laughs> let's let's focus on the Chamba. Uh, we're gonna do this one last fight with the Cell, and I think we're gonna call it a day. Um, hopefully, we can get his passive to activate. Maybe next turn he comes back. Super attack it looks kind of cool, by the way. Like it's not as crazy as a lot of the newer super attacks these days that are look looking like like every single one looks better and better, man. The AGL cooler one looks insane. The uh, of course the Gogeta blue and the physical Broly ones are absolutely disgusting, like in the best way possible. Uh, just messed up my rotation. Doesn't matter though. It's the last. <laughs> it's the last fight, anyways. Um, they just look so, so good, especially Transform Man, Gogeta Blue, and uh, Full Power Broly Transform. Their super attacks are some of the best in the game for sure. And every single one, like every new super attack, this gets better and better and better. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, the, what I'm trying to say is that the, the you know, the Chompa super attack is not really on that level, but I still think it's really, really cool. Okay, anyways. Enough rambling from your boy Tiger, we are done with the showcase here. I think you guys have seen enough to see that this this Chompa is actually very, very good with his new Extreme Z, or sorry, uh, Dokkan Awakening. And maybe one of these days he'll get a Do Extreme Z Awakening as well and become even more beastly. As far as Extreme Z Awakenings, I am really looking forward to this, guys. As you guys can see from the showcase, he's already a beast without the EZA, so yeah, it's gonna be good. He's gonna be really, really good. But uh, we're here to talk about this guy, and I gotta say, very impressed, very impressed with him. Even without the 200% the boost on his passive activated, he still does a fair bit of damage. If he crits, he'll do well over a million. And he didn't even really get to showcase, we didn't even get to showcase his full potential because we don't have tech hit, so we can't run the best possible Universe 6 team. We can't um, see him actually support the other Universe 6 units on that team as well. I mean, like, tech hit hits very hard, right? But with this guy in rotation, I can only imagine what kind of numbers that tech hit can put out. 
and hopefully one of these days I'll, I can finally pull the hit um, and the hit despair arc and uh, actually showcase this guy at his full potential. Or if not showcase again, then at least like run it myself and just enjoy this guy to his full potential with the 170% attack boost as well as um, you know linking as well. Like you know he probably has better linking partners on the Universe 6 team as well. So. I mean, that's all I got to say. Hope you guys enjoyed the showcase. This guy's a monster, especially with that active, uh, that passive active. But even if not, he's still a really good support. He still hits quite hard. And uh, I just love this unit. I'm very glad they did Tim Justice finally because he was so, so, so bad. If you guys used to have him, a lot of you probably bobbed him. And for those people that bobbed him, um, rest your soul, man. Rest in peace because he's actually really, really good now. Let me know if you guys enjoyed the video in the comments down below. And as always, if you like the video, make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, you like what you see, then make sure to hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell as well so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all of my latest content. But that's all for me. That's all I got to say. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.